of this amazing action comedy blockbuster and a great ensemble cast, please welcome Brian Thierry Henry, a.k.a. Lemon! So you are busy traveling the world to promote this amazing movie. This is a question to all of you, to the producers, directors, and the cast. Um, as I said, it's, it's a really, really great, amazing movie. But what I loved about it the most is, you know, the bickering between the characters and especially the way that you acted and interacted with each other. What was, you know, the thing about the story and the characters that immediately triggered your interest? To do this movie, Kelly and David use the word trigger because that is <laughs> very appropriate. I don't know. I think that all of us just had a, a instant chemistry when we met each other. I, it was like instantaneous. And, you know, this was filmed uh, in 2020, like right in the, the peak fire of the pandemic. So we were in our own little bubbles, and then we got to leave our bubbles to start this bubble. And David Leach created such a great um, environment for us to go and slap each other around, like <laughs> figure out what our characters' interactions were going to be on the strength. So it was pretty natural. Yeah, it did. It came along. The script came along at that really dark period of a lockdown before we had vaccinations, before we, we didn't know how we were going to get out. And it just seemed like, I mean, it was so damn funny. It just seemed like the perfect sad for that time and this time. And it's great. It's coming out now that we're, we're, we're out on the streets again and, and be around each other. So, um, I, it, one last thing too I'll add about the script was it just had, it, it had so many great parts in it that we were going to draw a really great cast. Ashton, that was true. 100%. It, the characters jumped off the page and we were all excited the minute we read it, so it's exciting. Aaron, Joey? Oh, um, I was like, dang, they kind of covered it. I'll just stand back. I was um, like, yep. I that sums it up. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I instantly, I mean, this this was a script that just gave so many great uh, opportunities. Uh, it was just, uh, s these characters so brilliantly bombastic and, and, you know, with David Leach and this heightened reality, with, you know, just allowed us to really want to explore and play. I mean, it's it's got a lot of light in it and... Uh, and uh, you know, great cast, you know. So it was, uh, it was an instant. Like I want to be a part of this one, and, uh, and so you know, it was, yeah. it was extraordinary. On the page, the characters were really wacko, but these guys took it to a whole nother level. A hundred percent. True. I never envisioned it would turn out as crazy, but um, I'm glad it did. Yeah. D David and Kelly, um, you know, talking about the action sequences on this uh, fast uh, speed train, was it a burden or was it an opportunity to have action on, on these kind of perimeters and the, 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 the space that you had to use? I mean, it's always, uh, as a choreographer, you want to put constraints on yourself. You want a problem to solve in the choreography. So, you know, the box of the train was like daunting, but um, I think it presented those opportunities to make it fun. So, you know, the choreography team, we put together an amazing team of guys and they um, uh, were up for the challenge. We created environments inside the train uh, so you could have different props and weapons to play with and, you know, just to make sure that you would keep it fresh and original. But again, the constraints, you know, constraints lead to creativity. And I think that I like that as a, a choreographer. I gotta say that kind of, that was a big thing for me. It was like the, uh, the feeling of claustrophobia, like, and, and these contained sort of spaces allowed us to kind of uh, use that with our characters. And then David Leach is so brilliant. Like, there's this great se sequence with uh, Brad and Brian, and they've got a fight sequence 
in uh, uh, by the table and in the chairs, but then it's the quiet zone, and then there's someone's telling them to be quiet, and then they're going to beat each other, but they've got to hold that. You know, it's just so many <laughs> layers of com uh, confrontation and conflict, and it's stuff like that that we played with, and, and, and it really allowed us, as it was just sort of, you know, acting sort of gold. It was just, you know, giving us a challenge constantly every day, so that was great. And it looks amazing. Any questions? Right here, second roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nee, da kommt ein Mikrofon. Komm mal da. Mikrofon. Hi, Pavis Koswavi, my name. Thank you so much for this great movie. It was a really, really fun ride, let me say that. Well done. Well done, ladies Thank and gentlemen. You. Thank you. So, how hard, how, how physical was this shooting, especially all the, the actions, the fighting scenes, and how much cuts and boozers did you get? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that comes with the territory. Aaron, you may want to take that one. I've got a Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a really good boo-boo. It was yeah. a Brad Pitt, like, Injuice. Trump kicked me and I uh, then landed on my hand and sliced it open and now I've got my, like, Fight Club scar. But it should okay. be there. About there. Anyway, it's really cool. It's all good. It's all good. It was really the wooziness of the... Yeah, then the I passed industry. out. <laughs> but that's the oh. movie, that one. We've only got it once. It comes with the territory. We all really wanted to get in there and do our fights, except Brad. But for, <laughs> uh, but for the most part, we all were getting in there. Like, if David Leach gives you something uh, with the David Leach touch on it, you want to do it. You know, you want to get in there and commit as much as you can. And I think we all, like, had a lot of rage coming in because <laughs> we were stuck in our houses. So beating each other up was the most cathartic thing. So <laughs> it was great. So we any bruises? I opened a, uh, a door on my thigh one day on set, um, and I still and I started bleeding, um, and I still have the scar to prove it. Uh, so that's my bullet train scar. Story. <laughs> I was <So> fine. <laughs> no problem. It was fine. Yo, Whatever. Dave, Dave Leach. Dave comes from the stunt world. Dave was, Dave actually was my stunt double, stuntman for me in '98, yep. the Fight Club. We met on Fight Club. Yep. And he trained me for the for the fights. And it worked so well. We went on to with that pairing till about '04 with a bunch of other films, and then he left me <laughs> <laughs> to do other things. <laughs> and and now it's come back around for a full circle. So it's really nice for me to um, to have him as the boss now. <laughs> it's been a blast. I can't say it's it's been a blast. We had a great time. Dream come true. Dream come true. Questions here vorne, direct die Van Damme. Gibt's ein Mikrofon? Ja, genau. Hi, I have a question. Sorry, Michael Kronberg from TV Movie. Question for you, Mr. Pitt. You talk a lot about bad luck and good luck and fate in this movie. What do you think about those big topics yourself? Yeah, I, I do like that. I mean, within this, this, what I think is a really funny film, there is this undercurrent, mess, you know, this message of fate and you know, that we are all agents of fate in some way. I, I tend to lean this way. I tend to believe this way. I, I, this is something I argue with myself a lot. I don't know, you know, how much is fate, you know, like we're puppets in some bigger play, or how much is, you know, personal will or manifestation or whatever you want to define it. I think they're both at play, only because I don't have a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fate. You found it? Need directly damn it, Anim? Uh, hi, I have a question for Brad Pitt too. Uh, so you uh, did the movie in the middle of the pandemic. Now um, you can come out a little bit, um, and you're traveling around Paris, uh, London. Um, how is that for you? Did you did you miss the hype? I, I mean, you must have seen the the fans outside. Did you miss the hype, um, or are there even things that you didn't miss? No, it's uh, no, not in that way. I didn't. I had. I didn't even realize it's been like three years, you know, because we've been in lockdown and haven't brought anything to the table in a while. But at the same time, I, it's not. It's not that aspect of it. It's just nice, you know. We all put everything we had into to telling the story. It's come together. The planets almost have to align for a movie to be good, and we're, we're really like pretty proud of this one. And it's really nice to now to let it go and let people. You know, hopefully people will be enjoying it together in a theater, laughing. Brian and Aaron, um, as the twin brothers, <laughs> Lemon, <laughs> Lemon <laughs> and Tangerine. And David, this is a question directed to you as well. Um, the minute that we meet Lemon and Tangerine, they, they just start, you know, it's like the odd couple, like Walter Matthau <laughs> and, uh, 
and Jack Lemmon, the way that you talk to each other. <laughs> Pretty was good. That, was that a lot of yeah. improv? Jack Lemmon, or, Jack and David, how did you control the two of them? Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they had a blast. That's and, uh, the point. What you see is like, no control. I think it's true. Walter no Matthau. No control. You know, again, there was a lot of this in the DNA of the characters on the page. And Zach Okowitz, the writer, did an incredible job. But um, putting these two together is like, um, you know, it's it's a gasoline and a match, and once you light it, you just want to let it burn for a while. And I had the fire extinguisher just on take 20. These metaphors feel loaded. But I, it was, uh, I, it, it was a contained fire. Okay. You have to let them, uh, you have to let them play because you're getting gold. And so I want to say, like, making a movie is a collaboration, and to collaborate with these guys and, and everyone on the stage is um, a beautiful thing because we had such a great team. But how did you guys feel about working together. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that. I got over it. It's like, <laughs> I showed up. Uh, it's that rare thing, you know, like you, you're very lucky when you find somebody that you can volley off of uh, when you get that chemistry that's instantaneous that you can play with. You can let your guard down. You would like, I think well, you called us in for a chemistry read and like I remember, <laughs> I remember us sitting down. He made this makeshift train car, honestly, and it was really, it was really daunting and weird and we were like, oh, okay, well, we're going to pretend to be on the train. We sat our scripts down on the table and we just sat across from each other and we just started going and we just like threw the scripts away. <laughs> like, like, well, we don't need this. But Aaron and I, I have been a fan of his for a long time and um, I, everyone up here I've been a fan of for a long time except Brad Pitt. And I, <laughs> and, um, when I got a chance to, <laughs> when I got a chance to play with Aaron, it was just, it was so much fun. Um, there was no, you weren't second guessing anything. You didn't feel guarded. You just wanted. It was like meeting my best friend, like like, and just having a good time. So uh, David let us do that. He let us play, and the result is what you see. Yeah, we kept, we you kept so much more than I thought you would keep. Oh yeah, it was gold. I'm not gonna get rid of that. <laughs> I was like, oh, you guys okay. making me look good. I'm gonna take it all day long. It prequel, Tangerine <laughs> and Lemon. You keep That's saying prequel. this. Prequel. Y'all heard that? It's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron, did you feel the same way, or is that something? Like, <laughs> no. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. No, listen, Brian and I, it's like he said, it's like you just, I didn't know who Tangerine was until, until Brian stepped on to be Lemon. I mean, he's my other half. He's my partner in crime. He's my brother. I, I needed... I needed, uh, it, and again, I was a huge admirer of his, uh, of Brian's work, you know, and and, uh, and the moment I met him, we just we just hit it off and we clicked, and he's a good friend, I care for him, I love him, and uh, and I think that came across, that's kind of the sort of added element that we brought to these characters, that we just had this full trust, and, you know, going to work every day was, it was, like you said, we shot it in, in, in a pandemic, in lockdown, it was pre-vaccines, there was a dark, cloud around us we all went to work and was like let's just have a good time and, and, and make everyone have yep. a laugh and 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 i was exploring a new character and and i lent a lot on brian he's super smart and quick-witted and we just was able to <laughs> elevate the material and like he said that's so rare uh and and it then on top of that we had david leach who just gave us this space and this encouragement and support and an environment where we could be experimental and and play and, and the same when I had scenes with Brad, you know, this is someone who could easily be threatened by at younger actors coming on board and being like, <laughs> just outshining him. In <laughs> just taking on but instead, you know, he was there going, keep, keep, bring God, it, I come on, bring it, bring it, bring it, sure. <laughs> David, can we edit this out? I don't know. I think we've got to keep it. So, you know, he had to roll with it. Uh, <laughs> probably why he kicked me a little too hard. <laughs> uh, I mean, like Brad's the most giving, you know, genu you know, generous actor, and, and he really did support all of us. And you know, it's been like that. This is a family. Of, you know, we had a lot of fun making this movie, we, we, and you'll see it on screen. That's that's what's really brilliant. Joey, I think the great thing about your character is that uh, <laughs> the prince is sweet, coy, backstabbing, brutal. Violent. Is there one of the character traits that you like the most to portray on the, on the you know, after the princess, this is the prince? Um, she's kind of a bitch, huh? She is a bitch. She's she is a very bitch. bitch. Um, I think it was just really, I mean, it's always fun to play the villain, you know? It's like, it's a really good time to be able to kind of slip into something that's so unlike yourself. Um, and also just play off of these amazing actors here. And they're so funny and they just elevate every scene. Because my character is so... Uh, 
she's so evil and she's so like sleuthy and conniving and innocent and all this, these fun things. Um, but I also had a lot of fun finding the humor in her and building her and also doing dialect training for her and then I also had to learn a little bit of a new language for her. So it was just like, there was a lot of cool things that went into getting to play her. But the best part was when all those things were in place, I got to come on set and just be like with the coolest group of people um, and just like kind of just find her essence with everyone. Kind of like Aaron was saying, he didn't quite know who Tangerine was without his lemon. I was, uh, I was excited to discover the spontaneity of what Prince would become with uh, this cool cast. Worked out perfectly. Any more questions? Lady over there, and then <clears throat> over here. My name is Frauke Guss from Radio Berlin. Mr. Pitt, you're back to Berlin. Welcome back. Uh, how Thank do you, you enjoy being in Berlin? Always. I love the city. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, every movie is a new experience. What was the most exceptional experience with Bullet Train you never ever had before? Again, you, I, I tell you what, I would walk on set and, you know, we pulled this thing all off in one soundstage. And it was, it was technical mastery of the, of the, you know, the latest equipment to be able to do it. And that was really exciting. But I, again, it was just... I can't say enough about that time. It was just that time we were all kind of losing it. And, and to be able to, to, you know, go to work and just like go have a, you know, laugh and, and know we're bringing something that, that I think is going to be, you know, a nice thing for, for everyone in that time and this time um, was, the, was really the, uh, the prevailing theme and something that always like resonated with me. And, but. Don't. Don't, don't do it. And we right. got around that. <laughs> oh my God. No comment. Question over here. Um, hi, my name is uh, Leticia. I'm from Sinyasin TV. Um, first of all, congratulations for this great, amazing movie. We had a lot of fun yesterday uh, watching it. Um, my first question, uh, not my only question, uh, for, for <laughs> David. I have so much uh, questions, but um, is you have um, this movie uh, shows a lot of violence on the other side, a lot of humor. Like how they don't fit together, but like in this movie, it is they perfectly fit together. Like how did you achieve that? Well, I think it's. I mean, it's always a balance of tone uh, in a movie, and I think that's one of the biggest challenges of any entering any film is like you got to land the tone. Um, and you, you live and die by that. Um, I think creating the heightened world, like Aaron said earlier, allows us to get away with more things. And so we're in this sort of like comic book world, this escapist fantasy world, and we can play with some of those um, darker ideas, you know, uh, <coughs> spoiler alert, you know, Tangerine's death. I mean, it's, it's graphic, but it's also funny. And I think it's okay to um, laugh at those things. Um, <laughs> Look, I love action. Scratch and that. I love the Scratch that. <laughs> Scratch that. <laughs> Can you say that? <laughs> and then he comes back to life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, look, he. It's. He didn't need to use me. Me and the buzz. Sorry. Anyway, I think it's important in those in in movies to take people on a ride, and you can have all of those things live inside a film. Yeah, I'll add that, you know, atonality used to be like a dirty word in filmmaking. Dirty. And I think that's one of the beauties of David's filmmaking is, you know, you're, high, you're laughing one time, you're crying the next, and you're going on this wild ride in between the whole way through, and it feels like just exhilarating and wild, and I think this movie has that in spades. Yeah, what you're pointing out is, is pretty much Dave's vernacular that, that has been really fun for me to watch develop, you know, from... John Wick to Deadpool 2 and now, now to us. So we, 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 we all signed up for that. Time for two more questions all the way in the back. Lady with the glasses. Thanks. Hi, I'm Veronica. Uh, first of all, thank you for this amazing movie. It was so humorous, funny, and you did all a great performance. So thank you. Thank you. Um, except for your own role in character, which one of those did you like the most? And maybe you would have liked to switch into those scenes. For example, oh, I would have liked to do Lemon in those scenes. Like, don't. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come on, bud. 
I personally wanted to see a world where Tangerine and I switched parts just to see what uh, that would look like. I'd forever keep forgetting that I was Tangerine. I kept on thinking I was Lemon. <laughs> I was like, I'm Lemon, he's Tangerine. And then that was going to be like, we almost played just that like, for quite a Maybe you're twins. Yeah, like, yeah. I wanted to see what it would be like to do that. But also, you know, there's some really cool uh, parts really, in there. The Elder was really dope. And, I, yeah. I got to say, I really love... The Prince. I think yeah. that was, I think, you know, I think what That's Joey cute. did was killer, man. And uh, she had some fun, fun stuff to play with, like psychological stuff to play with and manipulations and things like that that I think was really, really cool. And I, I think you There was that. one moment where I was like, how am I, I was like, I just want to be playing someone else right now. There was this part, no spoilers here, where uh, there was like Thank a... Thank God. <laughs> Jesus, David, there was right. a rewrite. I think I me. There was a rewrite in my trailer one day, and I looked at it, and it was this like monologue, and it was a scene where it potentially a couple lines surrounding this monologue that had was new were in a different language. And I texted David, and I was like, "Hey, is this monologue supposed to be in English or the other language?" And he was like, "Oh, the other language would be cool." <laughs> I was like, "Cool? Uh, okay, it's in ten days. I don't know this language." So um, like in that moment, it. I started like panicking. I was like, oh my God, he just said it would be cool. Like, like okay, I got to learn this. I got to learn it really quickly. So in that moment, I was like, I just want to be Lemon right now. Oh. I just want to be Lemon right now. I don't want to learn this language. But um, that was actually the coolest part, getting to learn learn that. You crushed it. You did. Was, thanks, man. Did. I want everyone to notice that no one said they wanted to be Brad. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> just put a check. All right. We're out with that one. It's okay with that one. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to be Mama Mama. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Last question from the lady over there with the white dress and the black dots. <laughs> and the Hi. Hi, I'm Beatrice, the lady over there from Kino.de. <laughs> My question is for Brian. What? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What? I'm a massive fan, so. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thank you for your work. Uh, I'm assuming that you're now an expert on everything Thomas the Tank, and that's why I wanted to know, do you, or have you figured out personally, what, or have you sorted out the characters or that your co-stars are, the trains that your co-stars are? Yeah, who's it, the diesel? It's right? so, and would it's, you like to share? It's very clear who the diesel is. Oh, no. Is. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I'm not at a diesel. <laughs> just like, um, you know what? When I saw that in the script, I mean, I, like, I still watch cartoons. I'm still a fan of, like, you know, um, daytime television. That's, like, youth. What am I saying? Uh, but either way, I did I did look into Thomas the Tank Engine because I grew up with it, and like the fact that Lemon is so attached to it, and there's this youthfulness to him that he want you know he can tell who people are based on these characters uh, from Thomas the Tank Engine is you know I thought was really fun and cool and geeky to do. Uh, we all agreed to get Thomas the Tank Engine tattoos after this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that committee, but like, yeah, it was it was fun. That's what I liked about Lemon, like the levity of him, the the childlikeness to him that you can have him be so shut up, right? He can be so youthful, <laughs> he can be so youthful and still a killer at the same time. So, like, but I, I I'm not as well versed in Thomas the Tank Engine. As oh my movie. god, <laughs> God, Bradley. Um, yeah, it's all it's but Thomas the Tank Engine is still a fan. No, yeah, still a fan. Okay. <laughs> Finish? I'm yeah. done. I am so done, man. We're, we're here for you, buddy. Do you see the abuse? Can we're you all tell everyone you. about this abuse that I endure? <laughs> thank you so much. Vielen Dank für die Fragen. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Joey, Brian, Brad, and Aaron. Enjoy Berlin. Have a wonderful premiere. Am 4. August startet der Film in den Kinos. Bullet Train.